Hello and welcome back to another episode of Tash Teaches. I'm Tash and in today's video I'd like to look at creating deliciously evolving pad sounds easily in Bitwig. So without further ado, let's jump right in and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. I've loaded up two stock Bitwig pad patches here. Let's take a listen to each of them. This is a C3 I'm playing on this first one called He Follows. And then we've got this pad called Windy, another C3 there. If I combine the two of them, we have obviously the same note, but this rather interesting uh, combination of timbres that I think is a little more interesting than perhaps the sum of its parts. I'm going to bring the volume up a tiny bit on this first one. Uh, now what I'd like to do is group these, and I'm going to first make a clip that is a C3. So let's draw one of those in, and I want for this clip to be 16 bars long. And in fact, I don't want it to loop, I just want a 16 bar clip with a 16 bar C3 stretched through it. So there we go, stop. I suppose actually I have to make that to 17 if I want it to be a 16 bar clip. There we go. Now if I were to play that, I think 16 bars is probably enough time for us to hear a fair, fair bit of the modulation, a fair bit of these changes. So I'm going to copy that down to here as well. Just take a second to just listen to what we've got. Very nice. Now I'd like to combine the two of these into a recording that I can chuck into a sampler. And the way that I'm going to do that is by changing this group from group track content to show master track content. That then means that now if I wanted to I could just say create a four bar clip here and just bounce that and that's going to bounce four bars of everything that's inside it. That's now consolidated or combined these two pieces of audio. But what's quite nice is I don't even need to bounce it. I can just pick how long I want my clip to be. So let's say I would like again this to not be a loop but a 16 bar empty MIDI clip. If I make a new instrument channel and just drag that empty MIDI clip onto the instrument channel, you'll see that it's now bounced it perfectly for me. And now I have the ability to play just as I had before. But you'll notice that if I play a note that's higher, say a C4 now, it moves faster than the C3. Which means that not only is the pitch higher, but the playback of the sample and thus the speed of the modulation is also faster. Which leads to some really nice timbral changes, or sort of timbral textures. I'd also like to make this, say, a uh, loop that's continuous, and I'd like for when it gets to the end to just start again from the beginning of the loop, but fade. So instead of it, instead of it ping-ponging, should I say. Nice. Once it gets to that end, it's just going to start again. Now, in order to make this feel more pad-like, we're obviously going to have to increase the attack a bit. I'm going to put it to about 3 o'clock. And if I let go you see that it's a bit abrupt, so I'm also going to have to bring up the release to about the same. And I think that 3 o'clock on both of these settings seems to work quite well. I might also bring the decay to maybe 3 o'clock and the sustain down to 3 o'clock as well, just to sort of shape it a little bit when it comes down. Let's take a quick listen again now. really beautiful. But we've still got one problem, and as soon as you chuck these sounds into a sampler, I'm going to play a C major to demonstrate what's the problem. As I hold this down, we have this lovely sound. If I were to play another chord, I'm going to let go and play a D minor, it still, it still carries on. The C major sort of blends into it, which is really quite nice for creating these soundscapes. However, if I'm to play the same note, or in this case the same three notes in the chord again, I'm going to lift my hand off and play a C major, it starts it from the beginning again. It's, it's stealing that voice and it doesn't carry on in the same way as it does if we play another chord. Now this doesn't sound very nice when you're trying to create these lush evolving textures of course. And the way that we're going to fix this is on the instrument itself we go up here to steal same key. And all that's going to do by turning that off is allow us to, when we let go and play again, let basically a new instance of those notes continue so it's going to create basically a duplicate of this sampler but that's just going to allow those voices to carry on this can be really helpful for when you're creating these patches because sometimes you want to be able to just let your finger go and trigger a note again
Really lovely. But anyways, that's the basis of what we're going to be doing with this. Uh, actually, one more thing I wanted to show you is if we take a random modulator, we don't necessarily want for every time we trigger a note for it to start from the beginning, because then, although this modulation, you know, it's not to the point where you can say, oh, that's super obviously the beginning section of this, we would like for, I think, every time we play a note for it to start at a different point, therefore really increasing the chance of this being uh, sort of evolving and generative. So I'm going to use a random modulator here, set to note and hold, and I'm going to use that to pick the start point or the play position. You'll now see that as I press different notes, they all seem to start now at different points. Really lovely. Now we could also take a random modulator and use this to say change the attack so that not every note will start as slow as that. I would also do the same thing for maybe the decay, bring that down a little bit. The point is not to modulate it so much to the point where it sounds crazy, but just enough to the point where we're getting little subtle variations every time we play it. Very nice. Now this is a great single layer. I think if we were to also maybe take uh, an EQ, just shave this off a little bit, we don't need maybe as much bass. I'm not going to actually do it with the low cut, I'm just going to bring down the Q. Maybe a little bit of the low, the low frequency cut, but just bringing down that Q is going to slightly ramp down those low frequencies. Very nice. So this is just going to be the first layer for us in a, in a larger pad sound. So let's call this pad. And I've ahead of time created a little group here that features 10 single voices uh, playing C3s on a bunch of different Omnisphere patches. So let's take a quick listen. This is the first one, second, third. And of course, if we combine all of these, we have this big fat sound and we could use this entire thing in the same way that I just showed you but I actually want to create sort of uh, five patches of two. So if I take these first two sounds, this is probably good enough for me I think to create um, one layer. So I, again I'm going to change this from group track to master track and create a clip that is 16 bars long and it's not looped. Uh, the reason I'm not looping it is because otherwise you get this sort of double, like it bounces it twice and it's just it's pointless, no need. You're just going to create a larger audio file on your computer. Um, so all I have to do if I want to now add another layer to this is let's group this bad boy and we'll call this layer 1. And I'm just going to take, of course, this uh, empty MIDI clip and chuck it in here. It's going to bounce it for us. And now we have layer 2. Um, Volume wise, we could probably bring this guy down just to match the others. Match five. Yeah, that'll do. Let's take the next layer, drag that in here. Cool. Now I can just get rid of this com composite guy and I could play this fat synthesizer. I'm sure if I were to play a single note, it's not going to be too much of an issue. But if I were to play a fat chord now, it's probably a bit too loud, I would say. So we're probably going to want to just open, if we go to this view, to the, the mixer view, we can actually just have a look here and see if any of these need to have their volumes adjusted. Maybe this little guy here can come down a bit. Now, this first layer, let's bring layer one back up, actually. This first layer has got the attack and the release all set for it to be quite pad-like. But these guys are all starting pretty aggressively and that is because of the fact that these bounces uh, that they're playing are just starting at the same point everywhere. So one cool little feature if you have a bunch of instruments in a layer or in an instrument selector or a drum rack or some sort of container device is you can select anything so long as they're the same device. You can select any parameter um, and say attack, I can right click on that and do copy value to all layers. And you can see that it's now actually a, a changed the attack on every single one of these layers to match. So I'm going to do the same thing with the attack decay, copy value to all layers, copy value and copy value. And now you'll see that every single one of these voices is behaving in the same way. So if I were to now hold down some sort of chord,
Mmm, delicious. Now, of course, we want to make it so that they uh, loop in the same way. So I'm going to drag this guy to here. Let's just do it for every one of these layers. Cool. Now that I have created a sort of looping aspect for all of these, I want to also do what I did for that first layer, which is pick a sort of uh, random start point for every single one of these as well. So let's just open up, add the random modulator set to note and hold. And I'm just going to map that to the play point. I'm going to go ahead and do that to every layer as well. Nice. Now every single one of these is starting at a different point. Mm. Lovely. Now, while we've got a great sounding uh, instrument here tonally, I'm still not massively in love with the texture. And so I'd like to add some, some more layers to this that aren't going to be as melodic or harmonic, should we say, and more just textural. And I've created uh, a little layer here of five effect sounds. So I've got this uh, cricket noise here, got the sound of some waves. I'm not sure what this is. I guess this is another sort of cricket, some rivers at night, some birds, and this is African savanna at night time as well. I also just want to make these raw so that they're not... Um, let's just bring the loop length down on here. I don't want for these to be... Uh, actually, it doesn't really matter. I can fix that after the fact. Put these back on raw. There we go. So I want to add... Uh, if we call this layer on our instrument tones, I'm going to group that again, and I'm going to now add these. Well, let's add one first. I'm going to add this into here. So this is our textures sound. And I'm going to group the individual sampler with that texture on, and I'm going to drag the, rec the, the next four sounds in, and that's going to create all five of them in one layer, which is going to give us a pretty fat texture sound. Let's just make sure that we have exactly the same settings as we do for all the others. So in this case, I'm going to bring the attack up to th th 3 o'clock, release up to 3 as well, and let's copy those values to all layers. Uh, also, we're going to want to do the same looping effect. So let's just drag that out. Some of these, of course, need to have their actual loop length even brought in further just because they've got a bit of silence at the end of them. Let's put that on there. Very nice. Okay, now all of these are looped, so if we were to listen to just a single note now, this is going to take into account all of those six tones and then all of these five textures. Let's take a quick listen. Mm. Let's play another note. We'll play a C3 above it. And a C4. Mm. Super nice. Now we want to do the same thing with these textures as well. Just make it so that every single time they're not starting from the beginning because that's going to definitely give away the fact that this is a sample. If uh, every single time we hear a bird or a texture or some sort of uh, the same wave in the same order every time. So let's just add another bout of randoms to all of these and uh, we'll just use that to again change the start point of every single one of these. Very nice. Now, every time I play a note, we're going to be getting a different start point for these guys. Also, make sure to turn off the still same key for these textures as well, because otherwise it's going to feel a bit weird if all of a sudden we lose the crickets and they just cut out. We don't want that. So now... Actually, I need to make sure to do that on all of these tones as well. So let's turn off still same key. If you dig what I do and would like to support me so that I may keep making these videos long into the future, then I would love if you would sign up for my new music production and creative mindset coaching community, Tash Tribe. Included in your membership is not just the project files to these tutorial videos, but the ability to attend weekly and exclusive live stream events such as Feedback Friday, Track Breakdowns and Random Concept Masterclasses. 
There's also free presets and free sample packs, as well as the ability to take part in creative challenges with the other members of the community. If you'd like to learn more about this, then the link is in the description down below. But in the meantime, let's get back to the video. Right now we have it so that if I were to play a three note chord, say a C, E and a G, a C is playing on every single one of these, and an E, and a G, and similarly with the textures, we're getting uh, the chord is playing on every single layer, which in some ways can sound pretty good, but it's definitely going to add a bit of mud to the mix. So my next idea would be, why don't we create uh, a way for individual voices to be sent to individual p patches here? So I'm going to actually change this tones uh, layer, this instrument layer, into an instrument selector. So right-click and convert to instrument selector. And then let's change the mode to round robin. And that's basically just going to mean that if I play a three note chord, that's going to be split across three of the voices. If I now add uh, another layer to this, it's now splitting those onto the rest. So if we go to the other view, we could now see that if I were to play this chord, we have the C, E, have the full chord being spread across them which is bloody wonderful uh, we could do the same thing with the textures which just means of course that then uh, each note will be playing a different texture and it will be happening a sort of random sense because of the fact that we can't necessarily keep track of how many notes we're playing so sometimes the lowest note will be playing the crickets and vice versa so let's change this also to round robin have a quick play again Very nice. We might want to bring the overall volume of the textures down a little bit. Um, clearly this, they're a little bit loud. Really nice. Also, it could be a good idea to bring in some sort of... Uh, some sort of reverb. So I'm going to go actually to on the pad sound itself. I'm going to go into the tones and then the group that we've created for these tones. It's just for my OCD, call this textures as well. I'm going to go in then to tones here and in the effects slot I'm going to add a reverb. So let's just solo the, the tones. Make sure that we've got a nice nice big fat tone here make the decay really quite long, maybe even bring the mix up to beyond 50%. Hmm, it's really nice. Now, instead of putting effects in, uh, in, in a chain or in series, I'm actually going to group this reverb and I'm going to add a convolution as well. And I'm going to bring, say, this mix all the way up to 100%. And I'm going to play around with some of these tune tuning and... Uh, the brightness here. Maybe I'll increase the wet gain and see what else we've got here. For let's look for a, maybe a studio hall. Let's go for something really huge. Let's go for maybe this. Let's go for this large and deep. Oh, that's very loud. In fact, let's also bring the mix of this uh, first reverb up to 100% as well, and we can use the mix knob of this effects layer to blend in some of the original sound. Be a good idea to add some sort of delay as well. Let's take a delay too. I'm going to put that to say 6 and 9, just to make it quite long. Of course, we've got to put the mix up to full as well. I'm going to add one more delay. We'll do a delay plus, and I'm going to say, let's add, say, five eighth notes, uh, which could sound quite interesting. Let's add a bit of, say, let's do reverse. Full mix again as well. Bring the mix down a bit here. Could also take a blur. Let's add that into the mix as well. See what happens if we add that before the overall effects. Now let's see what happens if we turn off both of these effects. 
Mm, yeah, you can see how much that's just sort of added a delicious fattening to the texture. We could even then take some sort of random LFO here and put it to smooth and free and just have that kind of modulate the mix of things a little bit. Even on the effects layer, we could uh, have some sort of uh, situation slightly changing the the balance of these different effects over time. So let's just make a couple of these guys, duplicate them. I'm going to change that a bit. Just giving them some slightly different speeds. And we're going to use these to just slightly bring the volume up and down on these effects layers. Which, who knows, you know, it might not sound like it's doing much, but... It's definitely going to do something. Let's bring back in the textures. Really, really nice. Maybe on the textures we'd like to add some sort of effect as well. I'm going to take uh, another reverb. I'm going to make a large hall, maybe, but uh, just early reflections. Let's try that out. Also, I might just add one layer in here that is, uh, that is a synthesizer. Or, in fact, maybe I'll take these tones and I'll use this whole kind of uh, round robining situation to be one layer. But I'm going to group the tones again, and I'm going to add... Also, another layer in, which will be, say, a polymer. And this polymer is currently quite boring. So let's add in, say, a long attack and a release and a decay. We probably don't need... We've got to do the same thing of turn off still same key. I want to add some sort of LFO, like fast moving, to the skew. And this, uh, just adding one synthesizer layer into here can then help really blend everything together. Uh, let's take an envelope as well, and we're going to use this envelope to pick how much this wobble is happening. So that just means that the longer a note plays, the more it will wobble. Let's bring this layer down a little bit in volume. Let's do some sort of random smooth moving uh, LFO here for the fold. And I'm going to do that maybe faster. Let's do, say, eighth notes. And of course, all of this is happening on a per note basis. If I turn this off. Let's make the amount of fold a little less. Let's also just turn on the detune, the stereo detune. Go maybe as far as 80 there. Add a tiny bit of noise, not too much. I'm also going to just bring down the, the EG amount and bring up the filter until I can hear just a bit of the noise. Maybe high pass it a little bit, add a bit of glide. Let's also take a smooth moving random here set to say quarter notes and we'll use that to play with the panning, making sure to turn on the bipolar mode. And of course, as we said, all of the tones up here are single notes are being sent out to the individual voices, but because we've got this one polymer here, this is actually playing all of the notes, which is just helping create a sort of con con continuity in the sound. So we'll just call that uh, synth. Okay, lovely. Now that we've got this all set up, let's hide that. What might be a nice idea is to have uh, a variety of chords on this channel, sort of just triggering and uh, moving around, creating a delicious generative feel. So I'm going to take a Scalar 2 patch here, and I'm going to find a selection of chords that I like. So um, let's just look in maybe artists, and I'm going to pick a random one. Let's go for... MG the future and let's pick someone that sounds good. How about Sleepwalker? I'm going to map the, I'm going to bind the MIDI to this first chord. So let's see what this sounds like. A little bit too low for my liking. Maybe we'll go for CC Rogers, Live Your Life.
I'm also actually going to need to go in here and just make sure that I increase the voices of all of these layers, because uh, if, if I'm playing multiple chords on here, the polymer in particular, I want, let's say, at least 16 voices. That's just going to allow for these notes to carry over smoothly. Lovely. I know, I, I know, in fact, that I like this one here, so I'm going to go for cinematic, uh, let's do, say, journeying. Now, what I'm going to do is take one of these chords and just drag it out, and the next chord, and the next chord, and there are a variety of ways that, of course, I could get this MIDI in here, but for the sake of keeping these all in individual clips, I'm just going to drag them out like this, and you'll see why in a second. I can now actually get rid of Scalar, or in this case, I'm just going to deactivate it. And I'm going to highlight all of these clips because you see how the, the clips, that the MIDI note only takes up half the length of it. I want them to take up all of them. And instead of going in and manually doing it for each clip, I'm going to highlight every single one. I'm going to go down here to layered editing if it's not already on. And I'm just going to highlight these and double the length. Et voila. So now I have individual clips for every single one of those chords. And I could increase the length of these clips. I'm just going to duplicate them to be, say, four bars each. And now, instead of this clip, when it gets to the end, playing again, I would like for it to randomly play another one. And not necessarily the next one every time, but just another one. Um, and the way that I'm going to do that is by, again, highlighting all of them and turning on Next Action. That means that after one loop, of this clip, one run through of this clip, it's going to stop. And I don't want it to stop, I'd like for it to play other. And you'll see what happens that now when I play this clip, we're automatically got this next guy ready to rock and roll. So let's see what happens when it reaches the end. Mm, really nice. Now one thing I'm noticing as well is I don't really want all of these low notes, so I'm just going to highlight them all and just actually just shift them up an octave. And uh, of course, if there was already a note there, then that doesn't really matter, and it just means that we're going to have a little less mud, I think. So let's try it out again. Yeah, it sounds a lot better. Hmm, very nice. Now, what else could we add? I think maybe an overall reverb at the end could be nice. I actually want to shift all of these notes up a little bit. Let's just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. See what that sounds like. Hmm. Really nice. Could put a chorus maybe. Maybe bring up the mix on the reverb as well. Really lovely. I would also like to go into the instrument layer, the synth we've got here, and add the occasional random thing happen. And in that case, I want to take an envelope here that fully opens this fold up. And I don't want it to happen every time. So I'm going to take another random set to our favorite setting, which is, of course, hold and note. And we're going to use that, if we put this to zero, we're going to say that there's a random chance of how much this is actually going to happen. So you'll see that sometimes we're going to get a pretty fat fold increase. We'll also use that to open the filter, maybe. Really nice. We'll take another envelope and we'll use another random and we'll use that to open this bad boy. And let's just slightly change the envelope a little bit and we'll use that maybe on the skew. Now this is just adding a little bit of unpredictability um, into the sound which I think can be a really nice touch. Oh, sounds so good. We could also open up here and under the tones maybe add 
say a random modulator and we'll use that on a smooth moving set it to hertz let's just do a couple of these how many voices we got six so let's just slightly change the the speed of these guys we'll do some some fast and some really slow maybe just change the shape of some of these as well just give it a little bit of unpredictability and i'm going to use these to must remember to turn on bipolar mode because I want it to be able to go left and right when I map it to panning. So let's use this guy here. Oh, no, it's mapped to the wrong one. Let's map it to that. And this is just going to add a little bit more movement in the stereo field, which should, with all of the reverbs and the effects and all of that jolly good goodness we've got going in there, just really help dial things in a bit more. So actually, what's gone on here? You need to be here then, and then you, ooh. Nice, so now you'll see that these notes are gonna be slowly panning around in that stereo field. If we were to solo individual voices in this layer, might be a good idea to maybe roll off the bottom on some of these. I'm just going to select this to 100% key tracking and just sort of pitch it to C. Again, do that on every single one of these. And just double click. Ooh. 100 and again. Could be a good idea to add some sort of other delicious effect. I really like using on the master channel, you may or may not have it, by XLN Audio, this RC20. It's got a couple of nice pieces to it, particularly this noise. A bit too much if you go too high, obviously. But uh, in combination with these sort of pad sounds, a bit of wobble, too much, will set you down the wrong path. Oof. And I like a little bit of this distortion and this space knob, this reverb, is very subtle, but it really adds something quite delicious. Let's do a bit of magnetic, maybe even a little bit of this uh, bit reduction, not too much. Bring these notes down an octave. Really lovely. Let's take a delay as well. I want to do something quite long, say like a six, six quarter notes. Maybe pull it off a little bit so it's not 100% in time. We could also, after the scalar, say, uh, in fact, we could probably even just do it here. If we highlight every single one of these notes, let's bring the velocity down so it's a lot softer and just add a little bit of velocity spread. That's going to really help add a little bit more dynamics to the mix again as well. Could do the same thing with, say, pan. Just to add a little bit of this guy. In fact, I think we do that by going here to pan and just adding a bit of spread. Ooh, really lovely make sure that those textures are still coming through. Just bring them up a bit in volume. Could also make sure that these effects aren't actually going on to the textures layer. That would just help them shine through a little bit clearer. Another sound that I really like using is either um, Sound Shifter, which is a Waves plugin. Very simple, kind of ugly looking plugin that allows you to just pitch things down in real time and create a rather wild uh, sort of tonal artifacts in the process. If I just shift this down an octave, sounds really cool. I'm also going to bring the tempo down a little bit. Let's set it to say 60. And while I do like this lower thing, I'd like some of the high to come through as well. So I'm going to group that. It's going to bring the mix down. So we're getting a bit of both. And I could take another random, put it on smooth, maybe make it quite quite long, a bar and something. We'll just use that to play around with the mix a bit more. And if we put this before the RC20, um, yeah, if we put it before the RC20, then that is, of course, going to play around with the, the wobbling and the space and all that good old jazz. 
on both the low and the higher register we've got here. Mm. Bloody delicious. I'm also going to bring in another instrument that I've made that feels, uh, I would say, like in a similar kind of vein. I called it the Timeless Pad. And um, I used a similar kind of texture idea here. You can grab the presets along with a couple of other delicious evolving pad sounds in my Evolving Pads preset pack over on the Tash Tribe community. But if we take this other pad sound now, we could select the input to come from the same place. So I'm going to say uh, bring the input from pad as well. And if I now record enable this timeless pad, whatever chord we're getting on here is also going to be coming through on this layer. So here's one layer and here's the other. And I might bring the volume down of pad one. Maybe even just pan one a little bit to the left and one a little bit to the right. Ooh, that's just so delicious. Anyways, I think that about does it for explaining how to create these beautiful generative pads. I'm excited to hear what you come up with. Um, it's lovely to make these ambient atmospheres and just chuck it on and just listen and see what can happen. Um, yeah, so signing off and hope you enjoyed it. Well, folks, that's sadly all we have time for today, but I do hope that this video was useful. If you enjoyed it, then please remember to like, comment and subscribe and smash that notification bell too if you'd like to keep up to date with all of my future videos. But in the meantime, happy Tuesday and happy creating.